Hey guys, I'm Josh Benitez and this is Texan Woodworks. Welcome back to the shop. Today, we're gonna to be building this massive Texas size end grain walnut butcher block. So if you guys wanna see how you can build one of your own, stay tuned and see how I did it. So first things first on this build, we'll get that rough cut walnut over to the miter station. We'll get it cut to lengths into some more manageable dimensions. Now typically leaving from the miter station, I'll go directly to the jointer. However, I did have my lumber yard give me a straight line rip on these boards, knowing that they were too wide for my jointer. I'm gonna go ahead and use that straight line rip against my table saw fence. So you'll see me getting my Jessam stock guides as well as my table saw blade height aligned. And once I get that done, I'll rip these boards directly in half. That way I can joint one face and one edge before taking them over to the planer. Now right after the table saw, I went directly to the jointer, but because that's pretty time consuming, I'm not going to show that. So here, I'll show you labeling the parts. Now I labeled both the edge that ran against the table saw blade, as well as the face that ran up against my jointer, so leaving the rough cut edge and one rough cut face. However, they're actually going to be sent through my planer next, and as they come out, both faces will be perfectly smooth. Now that we've got these pieces S4S, you'll see me checking for smoothness. Now as I lay them down side by side on my cast iron top, I'm checking for two things. Number one, I'm checking that the edges that are going to be adjacent to one another during the first glue up are flush. I want zero gaps, or at least as few as possible. Next, I'll also be checking to make sure that all these pieces are the same height. In a face grain glue up, this wouldn't be as important, but being that I'm going to glue this up multiple times into a large end grain block, this is very paramount. Now typically right after this, I would actually go ahead and rip these down on the table saw to about one and three quarter inch strips. Somehow I lost that footage, so I'm going to actually go directly into the glue up. And I did glue these up into separate sections just so they would fit into my planer bed. So we've got all of these clamped up. We did that first initial glue up and we did it into four separate panels. So we've got those all right here. So now what we're going to do is we'll take these, we'll go ahead and pop them through the uh, planer. We'll get them all flattened out, get those glue spots removed, and then we'll go ahead and start cross cutting. We'll make sure to knock that out on our table saw, and then we'll start that ingrain glue up. All right, so now that we've got this all glued up, got our new sandpaper in, we're going to be able to actually use this new sander, which I'm pretty stoked about. So I'm going to knock all this glue and the kind of painter's tape that got stuck on here, we're going to knock that all down with some 80 grit. And then after that, I'll go over it real quick with 120. I'm not trying to get it perfectly smooth. However, I do want, whenever I cross cut these and then flip them, I do want those joints to be nice and, and seamless as well. So I'll make sure and get it as smooth as possible. So after we sand with that 120, we'll go ahead and take them over to the table saw and we'll get to cross cutting. You know, I was planning on sanding this with 80 grit and then right after following up with 120 just to give a nice smooth edge, but Man, that Merca sandpaper is incredible. That, I think it's called Abranet or Abranet. I forget. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. But one, the stock removal, amazing. Very quick, very smooth, very efficient. No divots, no uneven spots. Um, number two, the dust collection is phenomenal. I haven't wiped this down or anything. And I can run my hand across this entire thing. And I've got the tiniest of remnants. And I mean, barely anything. I didn't need a respirator. I really probably didn't even need any glasses, but kept them on just for safe measure because I had the, the fan on. But dust collection, fantastic. And then number three, they didn't gunk up at all. So there were no issues with it getting stuck, with it getting, you know, in one spot where it gets really dull. It stayed sharp the entire time. And very even, very smooth, very just a great overall sandpaper. I highly recommend. I'll make sure and link those uh, in the description below. Anyway, now that this is all smooth, I'm going to go ahead and clean one side up. We'll put that face up against the uh, table saw fence. We'll rip these down into strips of just over one and a half inches. I want it to be one and a half inches finalized. And so 
I want to make sure that I give myself just enough room for one, that final glue up and two, the final sanding. So I want to give myself just a little bit over, maybe a 16th of an inch or so. So not a whole lot, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and cross cut these and then we'll, we'll flip them 90 degrees and that'll be our first ingrain glue up. I somehow lost this footage too, but here they are all glued up into separate sections after the end grain cross cut. With most cutting boards, this is going to be a singular cut, but because this board was actually 27 inches wide, I ended up having to make this in two passes. Again, I have a large 12 inch sliding miter saw, so I almost never have to do this, but because of how massive this board was, I had to get a straight line cut and then flip it and match that cut up against the blade. Because this was not your typical miter cut, it was really difficult to line it up perfectly. So I did have a little bit of burning on one edge. In the next photo, you'll see as I'm checking it for square, there's a dark spot at the top. I promise that's not a shadow, it's just a little bit of that burn mark showing. Once again, yet another atypical situation. Normally this chamfer is something that I would knock out of my router table. It's a lot easier, it's a lot smoother, it's a lot faster. You set up the router bit once, you run the whole board across, and it's super easy. But because of how large this board was, I didn't want to take any chances. And this Ryobi trim router does a great job. Now the outside profile is the easy part. You'll see there I was contemplating how to do the corners, and I realized, let's not make it overcomplicated. Just clamp it back down and run the router horizontally. And again, because this is a trim router, it's very lightweight, yet very powerful. So I was able to do it with no problem. Now, I don't know about you guys, but after seeing those pictures, I'm definitely team chamfer all the way. And who doesn't love a good grain pop? Now I'm putting in the mineral oil, and you'll see how thirsty end grain really is. If you've never built an end grain board and yet you hear how much mineral oil they soak up, this ought to give you a pretty good idea right here. I went through almost an entire eight ounces just on this one board. After a little bit of trial and error, I realized the easiest way to do it was not get one area to soak it up, but just drench the board and spread it out, give it about 30 seconds to a minute, and it'll tell you where it wants more. Of course, my beautiful wife had to make her appearance, and here she is helping me out. These paint tripods work fantastic for setting this board up, especially since I didn't want the mineral oil, number one, on my workbench, and number two, I didn't want any extra dust that was sitting around to catch on the board and get soaked into the oil. Yet again, even the back of this board, after already penetrating through the top, is still soaking up so much oil. If you ever build one of these on your own and you think, there's no way this thing can take more oil, I'm just wasting it. I promise, keep going, you'll reach a point of saturation at some point. And here in just a second, you'll see it kick in. Typically I'd run this through my oil bath, which is a pretty large container. However, this board was just a little bit too big. By little, I mean about double the size. So I just went ahead and grabbed some gloves and my mineral oil bottle and went to town. It soaked up a lot, but it was definitely worth it. So now that we've got the cutting board fully oiled, we've put multiple coats on it, it's completely saturated. We've got everything exactly the way we want it. Next, we're just gonna grab a roll of paper towels, shop towels, anything like that that you've got and then our homemade cutting board oil. This is just a mixture of um, beeswax and mineral oil. So we'll go ahead and take the paper towels, we'll wipe off any of the excess oil, any of the excess dust, any finish whatsoever that may be left on there. And then we'll apply this. We'll let it soak in for about 20, 30 minutes. Apply a second coat. If it really, really needs it, maybe a third coat, but normally we're okay with two after we do that um, mineral oil saturation. And from there, just wipe it off and we're good to go. Cool, let's get to it. This is a pretty simple process. I normally just take a good sized scoop, dump it on the board, and then just spread it out. I was, however, pretty surprised, even after the oil saturation, how much mineral oil and beeswax this board still soaked up. And of course, my wife, with her lovely treats, had to make her appearance yet again.
All right, guys, well, that's it. Here it is. Nice and smooth, beautiful, end grain, massive Texas size cutting board. Very happy with how this came out. I cannot wait to deliver it to the client. He's gonna love it. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything I did, make sure and drop them down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Also, if you liked the video, if you got something from it, make sure to drop me a thumbs down right below as well. And if you want to see more of this, if you like what I do, and you want to see some more content from Texan Woodworks, make sure to smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. All tools that I used, sander, just some stock guides, everything throughout the entire build, I'll make sure and link down in the description below. So make sure and check those out. That really does help the channel. All right, until next time, guys, I'll take it easy.